Fitna, I read Bin Laden. They're not saying that they're acting the way that they're acting because bombs are dropped on them. If they were saying it's because of American foreign policy, it's because of the bombs, and I would be the first one in line to say, well, it's very easy because we stop bombing, they stop attacking us, and they stop oppressing their people, but it's much, much more complex than that. And it's also much, much older than that. Okay. That's just not true. Okay, anyone. I look, this is the anyone, facts. I will give you. It's, let's, let's read anyone Bin Laden can, together. Anyone, let's read Al Qaeda together. Anyone it's, can, it's, that's what they're saying. Welcome to the Libertarian Institute in Keith Knight. Don't tread on anyone. Does Al Qaeda hate America because of American foreign policy or because of Islamic fundamentalism? I'd like to accept Ms. Hersey Ali's challenge. Let's read Bin Laden together. Let's read Al Qaeda together. I'll be quoting. 22 speeches, declarations, and interviews from Osama bin Laden. Sources will include Jihad bin Laden in his own words by Brad K. Berner, Al-Qaeda in its own words by Jill Capel and Jean-Pierre Milleli, along with the Al-Qaeda reader edited and translated by Raymond Ibrahim. And finally, I will end with empirical evidence from Robert A. Pape and James K. Feldman in their book, Cutting the Fuse, The Explosion of Global Suicide Terrorism and How to Prevent It. Starting with the Sermon for the Feast of the Sacrifice on February 16, 2003, a section titled Tactical Recommendations, Bin Laden says, Then the fighters realized that the gang in the White House could not see things clearly and that their leader, that idiot they obey, was claiming that we envied their lifestyle when the truth which this pharaoh would like to hide is that we are attacking them because of their injustice toward the Muslim world, and especially Palestine and Iraq, as well as their occupation of the land of the two sanctuaries. When the fighters saw this, they decided to come out of the shadows and take the fight into their territory, into their homes. From the Al-Qaeda reader, edited and translated by Raymond Ibrahim, here is Osama bin Laden's Why We Are Fighting You, Letter to the Americans. Bin Laden begins, While seeking Allah's help, we form our reply based on two questions directed at the Americans. 1. Why are we fighting and opposing you? 2. What are we calling you to? And what do we want from you? As for the first question, why are we fighting and opposing you? The answer is very simple. Because you attacked us and continue to attack us. A. You attacked us in Palestine. 1. Palestine, which has sunk under military occupation for more than 80 years. The British handed over Palestine with your help and your support to the Jews who have occupied it for more than 50 years. Years overflowing with oppression, tyranny, crimes, murders, expulsion, destruction, and devastation. The creation and continuation of Israel is one of the greatest crimes, and you are the leaders of its criminals. And, of course, there is no need to explain and prove the degree of American support for Israel. The creation of Israel is a crime that must be erased. Each and every person whose hands have become polluted in the contribution toward this crime must pay its price and pay for it heavily. Bin Laden continues later, point number three, the blood pouring out of Palestine must be equally avenged. You must know that the Palestinians do not cry alone. Their women are not widowed alone, their sons are not orphaned alone. B. You attacked us in Somalia. You supported the Russian atrocities against us in Chechnya, the Indian oppression against us in Kashmir, and the Jewish aggression against us in Lebanon. Under your supervision, consent, and orders, the governments of our countries, which act as your agents, attack us on a daily basis. 1. These governments prevent our people from establishing Sharia law, using violence and lies to do so. Two, these governments give us a taste of humiliation, placing us in a large prison of fear and submission. Three, these governments steal our Islamic ummah's wealth and sell them to you at a paltry price. Four, these governments have surrendered to the Jews and handed them most of Palestine, acknowledging the existence of their state over the dismembered limbs of their own people. Section E. Your forces occupy our countries, you spread your military bases throughout them, you corrupt our lands, 
and you besiege our sanctuaries to protect the security of the Jews and to ensure the continuity of your pillage of our treasures. Section F. You have starved the Muslims of Iraq, where children die every day. More than 1.5 million Iraqi children have died as a result of your sanctions, and you amazingly did not show concern. Yet, when 3,000 of your people died, the entire world jumped up and has not yet sat down. Section G. You have supported the Jews in their idea that Jerusalem is their eternal capital and agreed to move your embassy there. Section 2. These tragedies and calamities are only a few examples of your oppression and aggression against us. It is commanded by our religion and intellect that the oppressed have a right to return the aggression. Do not expect anything from us except jihad, resistance, and revenge. Is it in any way rational to accept that after America has attacked us for more than half a century, we will then leave her to live in security and peace? In a later section of the same letter, bin Laden explains his justification for targeting civilians, or what governments often call collateral damage. Section B. The American people are the ones who pay the taxes that fund the planes that bomb us in Afghanistan, the tanks that strike and destroy our homes in Palestine, the armies that occupy our lands in the Arabian Gulf, and the fleets that ensure the blockade of Iraq. These tax dollars are given to Israel for it to continue to attack us and penetrate our lands. So the American people are the ones who fund the attacks against us, and they are the ones who oversee the expenditure of these monies in the way that they wish through their elected candidates. Section D. The American people are the ones who employ both their men and their women in the American forces that attack us. Section E. This is why the American people are not innocent in the innumerable crimes committed by the Americans and Jews against us. Section F. Allah Most High legislated the permission and option to take revenge. Thus, if we are attacked, we have the right to attack back. Whoever has destroyed our villages and towns, we have the right to destroy their villages and towns. Whoever has stolen our wealth, we have the right to destroy their economy. And whoever has killed our civilians, we have the right to kill theirs. Section F. As for the war criminals whom you censure and form criminal courts for, you then shamelessly ask that your own are granted immunity. However, history will not forget the war crimes that you committed against the Muslims and the rest of the world. Those you have killed in Japan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Lebanon, and Iraq will remain a shame that you will never be able to escape. It will suffice to remind you of your latest war crimes in Afghanistan, in which densely populated innocent civilian villages were destroyed. Bombs were dropped on mosques, causing the roof of the mosque to come crashing down on the heads of Muslims praying inside. You are the ones who broke the agreement with the Mujahideen when they left Kunduz, bombing them in Jangi Fort and killing more than 1,000 of your prisoners through suffocation and thirst. Allah alone knows how many people have died by torture at your hands and those of your agents. Your planes remain in the Afghan skies looking for anyone remotely suspicious. Section 4. We also advise you to stop supporting Israel and to end your support for the Indians in Kashmir, the Russian agents against the Chechens, and also cease supporting the Manila government against the Muslims in southern Philippines. If the Americans refuse to listen to our advice and the goodness, guidance, and righteousness that we call them to, then beware you will lose this crusade Bush began, just like the other previous crusades in which you were humiliated by the hands of the Mujahideen, fleeing to your home in great silence and disgrace, if the Americans do not respond, then their fate will be that of the Soviets, who fled from Afghanistan to deal with their military defeat, political breakup, ideological downfall, and economic bankruptcy. Next, we have Osama bin Laden's World Islamic Front statement urging jihad against Jews and Crusaders. Today, there is abundant proof of three indisputable facts on which all just men agree. We will mention these facts for those who can hear, whether it kills them or allows them to live. 
They are, first. For over seven years, the United States has been occupying the most sacred of Islamic lands, the Arabian Peninsula, plundering its riches, dictating to its rulers, humiliating its people, terrorizing its neighbors, and turning its bases in the peninsula into a spearhead with which to fight the neighboring Muslim peoples. Some may have contested this assertion in the past, but today, all the peninsula's inhabitants acknowledge it. The best proof of this is the Americans' continuing aggression against the Iraqi people, using the peninsula as a launching pad, even though all its rulers are against their territories being used to that end, but are nevertheless helpless to prevent it. Second, despite the great devastation inflicted on the Iraqi people by the Crusader Zionist Alliance, and despite the huge number of those killed, which is approaching a million, the Americans are once again trying to repeat the horrific massacres, as though they are not content with the protracted blockade imposed after the ferocious war, or the fragmentation and devastation. Here, they come to annihilate what is left of this people and to humiliate their Muslim neighbors. Third, if the war aims of the Americans are religious and economic, they also have the effect of serving the Jews' petty state and diverting attention from its occupation of Jerusalem and murder of Muslims there. Nothing shows this more clearly than their eagerness to destroy Iraq, the strongest Arab state in the region, and their attempts to fragment all the states of the region, such as Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Sudan, into paper statelets, whose disunity and weakness guarantees Israel's survival and perpetuates the brutal crusader occupation of the peninsula. Killing the Americans and their allies, civilians, and military is an individual duty for every Muslim who can carry it out in any country where it proves possible in order to liberate al Aska Mosque and the Holy Sanctuary, Mecca, from their grip, and to the point that their armies leave all Muslim territory defeated and unable to threaten any Muslim. This is in accordance with the words of God Almighty, and fight the pagans altogether as they fight you altogether, and fight them until there is no more tumult or oppression, and justice and faith in God prevail. Next we have Bin Laden's August 1996 Declaration of Jihad against the Americans occupying the land of the two holy sanctuaries. Their blood is flowing in Palestine, Iraq, and Lebanon. The awful images of the Kana massacre are still present in everyone's mind, not to mention the massacres in Tajikistan, Burma, Kashmir, Assam, the Philippines, Patani, Ogaden, Somalia, Eritrea, Chechnya, and Bosnia, Herzegovina, where Muslims have been the victims of atrocious acts of butchery. The most recent calamity to have struck Muslims is the occupation of the land of the two sanctuaries, the hearth of the abode of Islam and the cradle of prophecy since the death of the prophet and source of divine message, the site of the holy Kaaba to which all Muslims pray, and who is occupying it? The armies of the American Christians and their allies. There is no power or strength to save in God. When duties accumulate, it is necessary to begin with the most important one, to push back this enemy, the Americans who are occupying our territory. The youth hold you responsible for all the killings and evictions of Muslims and the violation of the sanctuaries carried out by your Zionist brothers in Lebanon. You openly supplied them with arms and finance. More than 600,000 Iraqi children have died due to lack of food and medicine, and as a result of the unjustifiable aggression imposed on Iraq and its people. The children of Iraq are our children. You, the U.S. together with the Saudi regime, are responsible for the shedding of the blood of these innocent children. Due to all of that, whatever treaty you have with our country is now null and void. It is duty now on every tribe in the Arabian Peninsula to fight jihad in the cause of God and to cleanse the land from those occupiers. Bin Laden goes on to say, In 1304 AH, 1936, the awakened Muslim nation of Palestine started their great struggle, jihad, against the British occupying forces. He ends by saying, Terrorizing you 
while you are carrying arms on our land is a legitimate and morally demanded duty. Next, we have Bin Laden's message to the American people from Al-Qaeda in its own words. American people, my speech to you is about the best way of avoiding a repeat performance of Manhattan, as well as the causes and consequences of the war. By way of introduction, let me say that security is an indispensable pillar of human life and that free men do not forfeit their security, contrary to Bush's claim that we hate freedom. If that were true, let him explain to us why we do not attack Sweden, for example. Freedom haters do not possess defiant spirit like those of the 19. May God have mercy on them. No, we fight because we are free men who do not slumber under oppression. We want to restore freedom to our nation, and just as you lay waste to our nation, so shall we lay waste to yours. Only a witless wrongdoer plays with the security of others and then fools himself into thinking he will be secure, whereas rational people, when disaster strikes, make it their priority to look for its causes. God knows we never would have thought of striking the towers had we not seen such tyranny and oppression from the American-Israeli alliance against our people in Palestine and Lebanon. Only when we could take no more did we think of it. The events that affected me personally began in 1982 when America gave the Israelis the green light to invade Lebanon and the American 6th Fleet helped them. When the bombardment began, many were killed and injured and others were terrorized and displaced. I cannot forget those unbearable scenes of blood and severed limbs, the corpses of women and children strewn everywhere, houses destroyed along with their occupants and high-rise buildings burying their residents, rockets raining down on our land without mercy. It was as if a crocodile had seized a helpless child who could do nothing but scream. Tell me, does the crocodile understand any language other than that of force? The whole world watched this tragedy and did nothing. In those difficult moments, many thoughts that are difficult to describe boiled up within me. They produced an intense rejection of tyranny and a strong resolve to punish the oppressors. And, as I looked at those demolished buildings in Lebanon, it entered my mind that we should punish the oppressor in kind and destroy the towers of America so that they could experience some of what we had experienced, and so they would stop killing our women and children. And that day, I realized that killing innocent women and children is a deliberate American policy. State terrorism is called freedom and democracy, while resistance is terrorism and intolerance. This means that millions of people must suffer oppression and embargo until death results as inflicted by Bush Sr. in Iraq in the greatest mass slaughter of children ever. It means millions of children are subjected to mass bombardments because Bush Jr. wanted to overthrow a former ally and replace him with a new puppet to assist in the theft of Iraq's oil and other crimes. The events of September 11th unfolded against this background as a response to these grave injustices. Can one blame a man who is only defending himself? Is defending oneself and punishing an aggressor in kind? Terrorism, if that is the case, then we had no choice. This is the message I sought to communicate to you in word and deed repeatedly for years before September 11th. You can read it, if you like, in my interview with Scott in Time Magazine in 1996, or with Peter Arnett on CNN, or with John Miller in 1998. You can see it in practice, if you wish, in Kenya and Tanzania and Aden. And you can read my interviews with Abdul Bari Atwan, as well as my interviews with Robert Fisk. The latter is one of your compatriots and co-religionists, and I consider him to be neutral. Did the alleged defenders of freedom at the White House and the channels controlled by them bother to speak with these people so that they could tell the American people the reasons for our fight against you? If you avoid these causes, you will be on the right path to enjoy the security that you had before September 11th. So much for the war and its causes. As for its results, they have been, thanks to Almighty God, extremely positive and indeed beyond all expectations. This is owing to many factors, chief among them, that we have found it easy to deal with the Bush administration because it is just like the regimes in our countries, half of which are ruled by the military and the other half by the sons of kings and presidents. 
We know them well, both characterized by pride, arrogance, greed, and misappropriation of wealth. In fact, the White House policy of doing everything possible to start wars on new fronts to keep various corporations busy, whether in the field of arms or oil or reconstruction, helped Al-Qaeda achieve these tremendous results. As some analysts and diplomats have pointed out, the White House seems to be playing on our team. And the goal is to score against the United States economy, even if our intentions differ. It is in your own hands, and any state that does not violate our security has automatically guaranteed its own. God is our guardian and helper, while you have none. Peace be with the one who follows the way. Next, I have excerpts from Bin Laden's October 21st, 2001 interview with Taisir Aolini, the Al Jazeera correspondent in Kabul, Afghanistan. As to its description, that these acts were terroristic, then that description is wrong. These young men, whom God has cleared the way for, they have shifted the battle to the heart of the United States, and they have destroyed its most outstanding landmarks, their economic landmarks and their military landmarks, with the grace of God. And they have done this from what we understand, and we have incited and roused for this before, and it is in self-defense, in defense of our brothers and sons in Palestine, and for freeing our holy sites. And if inciting for this is terrorism, and if killing the ones that kill our sons is terrorism, then let history witness that we are terrorists. It became a total mockery, and that clearly appeared when the U.S. government interfered and banned the media outlets from airing our words, which don't exceed a few minutes, because they felt that the truth had started to appear to the American people, and that we truly aren't terrorists by the definition they want. But because we are being violated in Palestine, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Sudan, in Somalia, in Kashmir, in the Philippines, and in every place, this is a reaction from the young men of this Islamic nation against the violations by the American government. Bin Laden says later in the interview, I say that with no doubt jihad is mandatory on all Muslims to free the Alaska Mosque or to save the weak in Palestine and in Lebanon and in Iraq and in all Islamic lands. And there is no doubt that freeing the Arabian Peninsula from the polytheists is also mandatory on all Muslims. The interviewer asks, What about the killing of innocent civilians? Bin Laden responds, Killing innocent civilians, like Americans and other educated people say, is something very strange to say. I mean, who is the one that said our children and our civilians are not innocents and that their blood is permissible? In the case we kill their civilians, the whole world yells at us from east to west and America starts pushing its allies and puppets. Who is the one that said our blood isn't blood and that their blood is blood? Who is the one that declared this? What about the people that have been killed in our lands for decades? More than a million children died in Iraq and are still dying. So why don't we hear people cry or protest or anyone who reassures or anyone who gives condolences? The interviewer asks, So you say that this is treatment with the same action? They kill our innocent, so we kill theirs? Bin Laden responds, Yes. So we kill their innocents, and that is valid both religiously and logically. Because some of the people who talk about this issue, some talk about it from a religious point of view. Individuals should stand for God and rethink and redo their calculations. We treat others like they treat us. Those who kill our women and our innocent, we kill their women and innocent until they stop from doing so. America and Israel practice ill-advised terrorism, and we practice terrorism that is a good deed which deters those from killing our children in Palestine and other places. We swore that America will never dream of safety until safety becomes a reality for us in Palestine. That has exposed the American government and that it lives as an agent of Israel and it puts Israel's needs on top of the needs of its own people. So the case is easy. America won't be able to leave this ordeal unless it leaves the Arabian Peninsula and it stops its involvement in Palestine and in all the Islamic world. 
May 28th, 1998, Osama bin Laden was interviewed by ABC's John Miller. He was asked, What is the meaning of your call for Muslims to take arms against America in particular, and what is the message that you wish to send to the West in general? Bin Laden responded, The call to wage war against America was made because America has spearheaded the crusade against the Islamic nation, sending tens of thousands of its troops to the land of the two sacred mosques, over and above its meddling in affairs and its politics, and its support of the oppressive, corrupt, and tyrannical regime that is in control. These are the reasons behind the singling out of America as a target. He goes on to say, America heads the list of aggressors against Muslims. The recurrence of aggression against Muslims everywhere is proof enough. For over half a century, Muslims in Palestine have been slaughtered and assaulted and robbed of their honor and of their property. October 7th, 2001, a warning to the United States by Osama bin Laden. When hundreds of thousands of people, young and old, were killed in the farthest point on earth in Japan, this was not a war crime for them, but rather a debatable issue. When they bombed Iraq and killed a million children, it was a debatable issue. But when a dozen of their people were killed in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, Afghanistan and Iraq were bombed. Hypocrisy stood in force behind the head of the world's infidelity, behind the hubal of the age, namely America and its supporters. To the United States, I have only these few words. I swear by Almighty God who has raised the heavens without pillars that neither the United States nor he will live in the United States will enjoy security before we can see it as a reality in Palestine and before all the infidel armies leave the land of Muhammad. Here is bin Laden's message to U.S. allies, published by Al Jazeera, November 12, 2002. What U.S. President George Bush, the pharaoh of this age, was doing in terms of killing our sons in Iraq, and what Israel, the United States' ally, was doing in terms of bombing houses that shelter old people, women, and children with U.S.-made aircraft in Palestine, were sufficient to prompt the sane among your rulers to distance themselves from this criminal gang. Our brethren in Palestine have been slain and severely tortured for nearly a century. If we defend our people in Palestine, the world becomes agitated and allies itself against Muslims unjustly and falsely under the pretense of fighting terrorism. We warned Australia before not to join in the war in Afghanistan and against its despicable effort to separate East Timor. It ignored the warning until it woke up to the sounds of explosions in Bali. Its government falsely claimed that they, the Australians, were not the target. If you were distressed by the killing of your nationals in Moscow, remember ours in Chechnya. It is time we get even. You will be killed just as you kill, and will be bombed just as you bomb. Here are excerpts from Osama bin Laden's interview with CNN from Al-Qaeda in its own words. The interviewer asks, Mr. Bin Laden, could you give us your main criticism of the Saudi royal family that is ruling Saudi Arabia today? Bin Laden responds, Regarding the criticisms of the ruling regime in Saudi Arabia and the Arabian Peninsula, the first one is their subordination to the U.S. So, our main problem is the U.S. government, while the Saudi regime is but a branch or an agent of the U.S. The interviewer asks, If you had an opportunity to give a message to President Clinton, what would that message be? Bin Laden responds, Mentioning the name Clinton, or that of the American government, provokes disgust and revulsion. This is because the name of the American government and the names of Clinton and Bush directly bring to our minds the pictures of one-year-old children with their heads cut off. It reflects the picture of children whose members have been amputated, the picture of the children who died in Iraq, the hands of the Israelis carrying weapons that destroy our children. The hearts of Muslims are filled with hatred because he does not understand them. If there is a message that I may send through you, then it is a message I address to the mothers of the American troops who came here willingly in their military uniforms and who walk proudly up and down our land 
while the religious scholars of our own country are thrown in prison. I say that this represents a blatant provocation to 1,250,000 Muslims. To these mothers, I say, if they are concerned for their sons, then let them object to the American government's policy and to the American president. In an interview with Nida Ul Islam in 1996, bin Laden said, There were important effects to the explosions in Riyadh on both the internal and external aspects. Most important among these is the awareness of the people to the significance of the American occupation of the land of the two sacred mosques, and that the original decrees of the regime are a reflection of the wishes of the American occupiers. In an interview with Al Jazeera, Osama bin Laden is asked, What do you seek? He says, What I seek is what is right for any living being, that our land be liberated from enemies, liberated from the Americans. The interviewer asks later, What are your ultimate objectives? And what message would you like to convey to the Islamic world in general? Bin Laden goes on and eventually says, Our goal, therefore, is to free the land of Islam from unbelief and to apply the law of God there. Jewish hands piloted American planes and tanks while our sons in Iraq were dying because of the unjust embargo imposed by America and its agents. During this time, the Muslim world was living as far as possible from the true religion, and the situation had reached an unbearable degree of frustration, despair, and distress among Muslims, apart from those who fear God. Here is bin Laden's 2001 speech against the Crusaders and the United Nations. Following World War I, which ended more than 83 years ago, the whole Islamic world fell under the Crusader banner, under the British, French, and Italian governments. They divided the whole world, and Palestine was occupied by the British. Since then, and for more than 83 years, our brothers, sons, and sisters in Palestine have been badly tortured. Hundreds of thousands of them have been killed, and hundreds of thousands of them have been imprisoned or maimed. In Somalia, with the excuse of restoring hope, 13,000 of our brothers were killed. In southern Sudan, hundreds of thousands were killed. But when we move to Palestine and Iraq, there are no limits as to what can be said. Over one million children have been killed in Iraq, and the killing is continuing. What is taking place cannot be tolerated by any nation. How can the weak mothers in Palestine endure the killing of their children in front of their eyes by the unjust Jewish executioners with U.S. support and with U.S. aircraft and tanks? Here are two excerpts from Osama bin Laden's interview in 2001 with Hamid Mir, a Pakistani journalist. Bin Laden says, America and its allies are massacring us in Palestine, Chechnya, Kashmir, and Iraq. The Muslims have the right to attack America in reprisal. The interviewer asks, Can it be said that you are against the American government, not the American people? Bin Laden responds, Yes, we are carrying on the mission of our prophet Muhammad. The mission is to spread the word of God, not to indulge in massacring people. We ourselves are the target of killings, destruction, and atrocities. We are only defending ourselves. This is defensive jihad. We want to defend our people and our land. That is why I say that if we don't get security, the Americans, too, will not get security. This is a simple formula that even an American child can understand. This is the formula of live and let live. Tell me, if Indian forces invaded Pakistan, what would you do? The Israeli forces occupy our land. And the American troops are on our territory. We have no other option but to launch jihad. Here is a message known as the Gaunt Tape, published December 26, 2001, on Al Jazeera by Osama bin Laden. What happened in Palestine, and what is happening there today, in terms of the deliberate murder of children, is very ugly. The highest degree of injustice and aggression threatens all of humanity. However... America is pressing ahead with its injustice by supporting the unjust ones and aggressors against our people in Palestine. The United States is practicing a detestable terrorism in its ugliest form in Palestine and Iraq. Bush the father, the ill-famed man, was the reason behind the killing of over one million children in Iraq, in addition to men and women.
what happened on September 11th is nothing but a reaction to the continuing injustice being done to our children in Palestine, Iraq, Somalia, southern Sudan, and elsewhere, as well as Kashmir and Asia. These blessed and successful strikes were reactions to what has happened in our land, in Palestine, Iraq, and elsewhere. Terrorism against the United States is commendable because it is a response to injustice aimed at forcing the United States to stop its support of Israel, which kills our people. The issue is very clear. Cannot you be reasonable? America and the Western leaders have repeatedly said that Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Palestine and other warring organizations are terrorist organizations. If self-defense is terrorism, what is then legitimate? An Islamic nation of 1,200 million Muslims is being butchered from east to west every day in Palestine, Iraq, in Somalia, in southern Sudan, in Kashmir, in the Philippines, in Bosnia, in Chechnya, and in Assam. And we do not hear anything from them. But if the victim and oppressed rise to sacrifice their souls for their religion, then we hear their voices. Here are excerpts from July of 2003, Bin Laden's On Saudi Clerics and the Meaning of Jihad. A fundamental and realistic fact is that the land of the two sacred mosques is occupied, and if it is occupied by the U.S. military, the greatest commandment after faith itself is to repel the aggressive enemy. There, the rulers of Saudi Arabia, statements attest to their situation. In an interview with some world press agencies, Saud Prince Talal bin Abd al-Aziz said, Were we to tell the American forces to leave, they wouldn't. That is candor. Also, Qatari foreign minister said, If we tell the American government and the American forces to leave Qatar, we'll be wiped off the map. The land is occupied in the full sense of the word, yet despite this, people are busy with all sorts of other rituals. We must focus on making the starting point of jihad for the sake of God, guarding against those who refrain from jihad and herja, and jihad for God. All these are obligatory in the present situation in order to establish the truth and abolish falsehood. Here is Osama bin Laden's October 18th, 2003 broadcast on Al Jazeera titled Messages to the Iraqis and the U.S. Let the unjust ones know that we maintain our right to reply at the appropriate time and place to all states that are taking part in this unjust war, particularly Britain, Spain, Australia, Poland, Japan, and Italy. Here are excerpts from Bin Laden's 2004, A Reconciliation Initiative to Europe. Having said this, we would like to inform you that labeling us and our acts as terrorism is also a description of you and your acts. Reaction comes at the same level as the original action. Our acts are in reaction to your own acts, which are represented by the destruction and killing of our kinfolk in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Palestine. The act that horrified the world, that is the killing, of the old handicap, Hamas spiritual leader, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, may God have mercy on him, is sufficient evidence. We pledge to God that we will punish America for him, God willing. Which religion considers your killed ones innocent and our killed ones worthless? And which principle considers your blood real blood and our blood water? Reciprocal treatment is fair. And the one who starts injustice bears greater blame. Bin Laden goes on to say, Stop shedding our blood so as to preserve your blood. It is in your hands to apply this easy yet difficult formula. When referring to Bush, Bin Laden calls him the liar in the White House. Referring to him, he says, He also would not have lied to people and said that we hate freedom and kill for the sake of killing. Reality proves our truthfulness and his lie. The killing of the Russians was after their invasion of Afghanistan and Chechnya. The killing of Europeans was after their invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan. And the killing of Americans on the day of New York was after their support for the Jews in Palestine and their invasion of the Arabian Peninsula. Also killing them in Somalia was after their invasion of Operation Restore Hope. We made them leave without hope, 
Praise be to God. It is said that prevention is better than cure. A happy person is he who learns a lesson from the experience of others. Heeding right is better than persisting in falsehood. Peace be upon those who follow guidance. December 16th, 2004, Bin Laden writes, To the Muslims of Saudi Arabia in particular, and to the Muslims in other countries in general. They, the Saudi Arabian regime, opened their bases to American forces in order to invade Iraq, which helped them and made it easier for them to conquer Iraq. Who are those who have erroneous ideas and who are a corrupting gang? Are they the Mujahideen or... Are they those who cooperated with America in murdering more than one million children within a few years during their wicked embargo in Iraq? In what was the biggest massacre of children known to humanity? We ask God to give his grace to the Mujahideen who stormed the American consulate in Jada. How can they, the Americans, expect to enjoy security while they bring death and destruction upon our people in Palestine and Iraq? They do not deserve to be secure anywhere in the world. As for their presence in Saudi Arabia, or rather, in all of the Arabian Peninsula, it is prohibited by Islamic law. January 19th, 2006, Al Jazeera broadcast Bin Laden's message, offers to accept a truce. Bin Laden says, If you Americans are sincere in your desire for peace and security, we have answered you. If Bush decides to continue with his lies and oppression, it would be useful for you to read the book The Rogue State the introduction of which states, If I were president, I would halt the attacks against the United States. First, I would apologize to all the widows and orphans and those who were tortured. Then, I would announce that U.S. interference in the nations of the world has ended forever. As for us, we have nothing to lose. He who swims in the sea does not fear the rain. You have occupied our land, defiled our honor, violated our dignity, spilled our blood, stolen our wealth, destroyed our homes, and shattered our security. We will treat you in the same way. For 10 years, we patiently fought the Soviet Union with our few weapons, and we depleted their economy till they became history with God's help. You should take a lesson from that. Here is Bin Laden's April 2006 speech to the Muslim nation on the Zionist Crusader War against Islam. Among the greatest of the issues, which clearly demonstrates these concepts, is Palestine. What oppression, assault, and hatred could be more blatant than the Zionist Crusader Alliance deciding to hand over Palestine to the Jews for it to be their state after carrying out massacres there and displacing many of its people, then bringing the Jews from various countries to settle them in Palestine? This aggression and oppression have continued for more than nine decades and continue to this very day. All attempts to regain our rights, demand justice, and take revenge on the Israeli oppressor have been thwarted by the leadership of the Zionist Crusader Alliance by using what is called the right of veto. Going back to 1995, we have Bin Laden's letter to Saudi King Fahd. The heart of the matter is that these bases were not constructed for the Saudi army, but to be used by the American and Western forces already stationed in many of them. The presence of a foreign power on Holy Land is not to defend the country against the already destroyed and starved nation of Iraq when all the facts and observations suggest otherwise. The truth is that a foreign power is there to protect your throne from the inevitable and growing threat of Islam. The country is experiencing a blessed Islamic awakening that is on the rise in many military and civilian sectors in the country, causing you a great deal of concern. The country's army has a duty to protect the entire Muslim population and to defend their interests everywhere, let alone to defend the Holy Land. Therefore, there is no justification for keeping the national army in a state of weakness that hinders its enormous responsibility. It is unconscionable to let the country become an American colony, with American soldiers with their filthy feet roaming everywhere for no reason other than protecting your throne and oil sources for their own use. Those filthy infidel crusaders must not be allowed to remain in the Holy Land. 
Looking at empirical research regarding suicide terrorism, Robert A. Pape and James K. Feldman wrote a book titled Cutting the Fuse, the Explosion of Global Suicide Terrorism and How to Stop It. On page 8, they described the book as the first complete data set of all suicide terrorist attacks around the world from 1980 to 2009. Their research concludes with nearly all emerged from communities resisting foreign military occupation. From the introduction, from 1980 to 2003, there were 345 completed suicide terrorist attacks by 524 suicide terrorists who actually killed themselves on a mission to kill others, half of whom are secular. The world leader was the Tamil Tigers, a secular Hindu group who carried out more attacks than Hamas or Palestinian Islamic Jihad, PIJ, during this period. Further, at least a third of the suicide attacks in predominantly Muslim countries were carried out by secular terrorist groups, such as the Kurdistan Workers Party, PKK, in Turkey. Instead of religion, what over 95% of all suicide terrorist attacks before 2004 had in common was a strategic goal to compel a democratic state to withdraw combat forces that are threatening territory that the terrorists prize. From Lebanon to Sri Lanka to the West Bank to Chechnya, the central goal of every suicide terrorist campaign has been to resist military occupation by a democracy. The authors go on to summarize their findings. Number one, strong confirmation for the hypothesis that military occupation is the main factor driving suicide terrorism. The stationing of foreign combat forces, ground and tactical, Air Force units on territory that terrorists prize accounts for 87% of the over 1,800 suicide terrorist attacks around the world since 2004. Number two, strong evidence for new hypotheses about the causes of transnational suicide terrorism. Dying to Win, Robert Pape's previous book, explain that nationalism, the desire to perpetuate the local, political, religious, and social institutions of a community independent of foreign interference, is the taproot explanation for why individuals from a community facing foreign military occupation would undertake costly measures to defend it, including in extremist suicide terrorism. It was the Hindu, avowedly anti-religious, liberation tigers of Tamil Ilam, L-T-T-E, in Sri Lanka, whose 157 suicide terrorists totaled more than Hamas and all other Palestinian suicide groups combined. Of the Palestinian suicide terrorists, more than a third were from secular groups, such as al Aska Martyrs Brigade and Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP, of the suicide terrorists associated with Hezbollah in Lebanon during the 1980s, only 21% were Islamic fundamentalists, while 71% were communists and socialists, 8% were Christians. In Turkey, 100% of the PKK's suicide attackers were secular. Overall, Islamic fundamentalism cannot account for over half of the known affiliations of the 524 suicide terrorists from 1980 to 2003. 184 were from Islamic fundamentalist groups, 35% comprising 73 Al-Qaeda, 5 Lebanese, 5 Kashmiri rebels, 69 Hamas, 34 Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and 236 from secular groups. 45% comprising 157 Tamil Tigers, 42 al Aska. 22 Lebanese, 15 PKK, while 12, 21%, had unknown ideological affiliations. The authors then quote three of the alleged Saudi hijackers. First, Abul al-Jara al-Ghamidi. What is happening in Muslim countries today? Blatant occupation, about which there is no doubt. There is no duty more obligatory after faith than to repel him. Second, Abu Musab Walid al-Sheri. The occupation and deterioration in the land of the two sanctuaries is a plot by the Jew and the Nazarenes, foremost among them, America. May Allah destroy it, which has been among the chief causes of every misfortune suffered by Islam and the Muslims. 
Thus, repelling the Americans occupying the land of the two sanctuaries is the most obligatory of obligations. Finally, Hamza al Gamdi and I say to America, if it wants its armies and people to be safe, then it must withdraw all of its forces from Muslim lands and depart from all our countries. If not, let it await the men, prepare the coffins, and dig graves for its citizens. The authors finish the introduction saying further, Notice that there are no suicide attackers from Iran, one of the largest Islamic fundamentalist populations in the world, with a population greater than Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, and Syria combined. To reiterate Ms. Hersi Ali's claim, she said, I read Bin Laden. They're not saying they're acting the way that they're acting because bombs are being dropped on them. If they were saying it's because of American foreign policy, it's because of the bombs, I'd be the first one in line to say, well, it's very easy. We stop bombing, they stop attacking us, and they stop oppressing their people. This is a fact. Let's read Bin Laden together. Let's read Al-Qaeda together. So now that we've done that and empirically proved that it is more about American foreign policy than it is about Islam, I would ask that Ms. Hersi Ali retract the statement. I'd like to close with a quote from Peter Joseph. He says, To be proven wrong should be celebrated, for it is elevating someone to a new level of understanding, furthering awareness. Thank you for watching Keith Knight Don't Tread on Anyone in the Libertarian Institute.